This is KGW News at 5. As we think about this last stretch of work, it is the hardest on our crews. PGE says it is in the final toughest phases of power restoration, and that means more patience is required for the roughly 24,000 customers still without power. Hello, friends. Thank you so much for joining us for KGW News at 5 o'clock. I'm Laurel Porter. It is day 11 for some who lost electricity at the start of the storms. Today, PGE's president pledged to keep hundreds of crews going until the job is done. Tim Gordon is live with more, including some reaction from those with power restored. Tim. Yeah, Laura, we're going to hear from just a few of the roughly half million who have had their power restored now by PGE. But we know it's very frustrating for those who remain in the dark. We saw crews working hard on a rainy, breezy day in Oregon City. This was a big job, replacing a lot of gear on Barker Avenue. Even a week later, it still looks really bad here in Oregon City. That's kind of my point. This problem came to our attention from a neighbor's tweet. That pole and transformer blocked the street for more than a week. Right. Nearby... We did, we did. Some really big limbs came down off that oak tree. 85-year-old Vern Swanson was having the roof fixed to where a tree limb landed. Power was out for five days for them. The worst part was the darkness from 6 o'clock to 10 o'clock when it's bedtime. You know, what do you do? You got no TV, you got no internet, you know, you're back in the Stone Age. In more rural parts of Clackamas County, the Oregon National Guard worked with the sheriff's office, getting needed supplies to those without power for the duration and counting. This family of seven got some gas for their generator and other comforting things. I think it's really cold at night. My daughter's terrified of the dark and won't stay curled up in her bed, and so she likes to take a blanket, so this will be a good blanket for her to wrap up on mm -hmm. the couch. This is a mission these guard members are all on board for. So if you think about that 24-hour clock rolling around, uh, trying to keep warm throughout the night, there's little kids in here who are afraid of the dark uh, and stuff. So it's glad that we could come and help out. And here's an example of enthusiastic thanks to power crews from the Snyder family, especially six-year-old Logan. <laughs> that was Sunday night. We caught up with the Snyders today. Logan said his dad was pretty happy too when the lights came on after nine days. My dad was like, seriously, like, yeah, yeah, I, I, like I felt like the whole street was was doing that, you know. Yeah, it's very exciting. Yeah, uh, to have it come back on. Family, we're happy for them, and we thank them for their time. And also, thank you to neighbor Ian, who took that video and tweeted it out last night. Uh, he tells us actually that the the uh, crew chief for PGE that was in that video is uh, also lives in their neighborhood. So he was involved in getting his own power back on. It's just a small world, Laurel, and we hope we have more good outcomes to come here in the coming days. Back to you. And we see a lot more of those happy dances. Thank you, Tim. Well, tens no happy dances for a lot of people regarding the COVID vaccine appointments. Tens of thousands of 70 year olds joined the eligibility pool for the COVID vaccine in Oregon today, and it did not go well for many in the Portland area as they tried to grab a relatively small number of appointments. KGW's Pat Doris has our story. Across Oregon, more than 200,000 seniors aged 70 through 74 became eligible for COVID vaccines today. But being eligible is not the same as getting a shot, especially in the Portland area. So unfortunately, first of all, I got up at right after midnight because I thought, oh, it would open up immediately. But alas, it didn't. Ellen Iberg is 71, one of many who set everything aside to make sure he could snag an appointment and ran into glitches on the website run by the Oregon Health Authority and the four major health systems in Portland. Mostly successful, twice, uh, having an appoint appointments offered to me. I clicked on one and began the sign up process and got three quarters of the way into it and then was dumped out <laughs> both times. The third time he went back in, all the appointments were gone. Former TV weatherman Dave Sweeney ran into similar frustration. He had created a My Health account with Legacy so he could speed through registration. But this morning, after finding an appointment, the website would not take his name and password and eventually kicked him out twice. I don't know. The whole thing pissed me off. 
And I'm computer literate. I deal with these things all the time. I'm a freaking meteorologist, for God's sakes. And it just, um, and if, if somebody is telling you at Legacy or wherever that the computer system is working fine, that's crap. It's not. I heard from many people with similar experiences and frustrations. It's been a long year living with COVID. The shots offer relief and a return to some form of normal life. I'm sure they're very nice people, but come on, folks. We're all in the same boat. I haven't seen my grandkids like all of us in over a year. And to have a glitch in a computer like this is unconscionable. Magnifying problems with the website for the Portland area are the sheer numbers of those eligible. Statewide, 207,000 seniors 75 and older still do not have their shots. And today, the governor's timetable added 206,000 people 70 and older. And Monday, March 1st, the governor will allow another 258,000 people 65 and older to join the pool of eligibility. They don't all live in the Portland area, but a lot do. And all are competing for a relatively small number of vaccine doses. Nolene Conway thought she was ready since she had helped a 75-year-old neighbor get an appointment on the website just last week. And what was your experience trying to get a COVID appointment? Nightmare. <laughs> Very frustrating, disappointing. Um, fills you full of anxiety because you were looking forward to this so much and for so long. She lost multiple appointments because of one glitch or another. It was just, as I said, incredibly frustrating. I think in all going through the process over and over again, I probably ended up with getting maybe going in about seven times and actually seeing something until I didn't see anything anymore. I heard from the Portland area health groups late this afternoon. They say that appointments for the convention center went in less than an hour this morning and those for the airport went in about 35 minutes. And OHSU admits it accidentally released those appointments for the airport 15 minutes early. And they're apologizing for that. As for the IT issues, nobody's claiming responsibility, but they say that any issues that are there were either already fixed today or have teams working on them to fix them soon, which is a good thing because we do this all over again Thursday morning at 9 a.m. In Northeast Portland, Pat Doris, KGW News. And I'll add to that a personal note. My daughter and I tried to get my 84 year old mother an appointment today and by 930, half an hour after they opened, it said all the appointments were gone. Some of Washington's four state run mass vaccination sites are having to adjust schedules because of weather related shipping delays. The site at the Clark County Fairgrounds will open back up tomorrow, prioritizing people getting their second shot. The site needs to receive shipments before Wednesday so they can be fully operational the rest of the week. Most Pfizer vaccines will arrive in Washington today. Moderna expects to deliver its backlog before midweek. A devastating marker in the pandemic. More than half a million Americans have now died of COVID-19. That's more than the number of Americans killed on the battlefields of World War I, World War II, and Vietnam combined. Candles to honor the lives lost were lit at the White House tonight, and a moment of silence was held. The U.S. toll is far higher than any other country. More than a fifth of worldwide COVID deaths have occurred in the U.S., but we're home to less than 5% of the world's population. Although the nation reached that dark milestone, there is some light. Hospitalizations are way down. And as Morgan Romero tells us, Providence Portland has no COVID-19 patients in its critical care unit for the first time in a year. Over the past year, Oregon's hospitals and COVID units have filled with hundreds of sick people every week. More Oregonians were hospitalized in late November, early December than at any other point in the pandemic. Just three months later, data shows a steep drop in hospitalizations. Currently, there are 167 COVID positive patients in Oregon hospitals. 47 are in ICUs and 21 are on ventilators. Everybody in our unit is very tired. It's been a long year. Elissa Reinhardt cares for the sickest COVID patients as a nurse in Providence Portland's critical care unit. She coordinates the most aggressive COVID treatment, ECMO, for the worst cases. It's been exhausting. Um, you see really sick patients and um, really hurting, scared family members, and you get very 
tired trying to emotionally support people through something that is so unknown when you don't have a lot of good answers. Providence Portland Medical Center currently has zero COVID patients in its critical care unit and only two admitted in the hospital. I've been off for a couple days and I came back and our COVID unit was empty and I was floored and thrilled. I can't believe it. It's the first time since all of this started that we haven't had any patients in there. It was, it was a relief to think that there could be an end in sight. I checked in with other metro area hospitals. 12 people with COVID are at Providence St. Vincent Medical Center with four in critical care. OHSU has three people with COVID-19 in its ICUs. 16 COVID patients are admitted in the OHSU health system locally. 20 patients with COVID are hospitalized at Salem Health, six in the ICU. It's just a, a light at the end of the tunnel that maybe this, it won't be like this every day forever. But those on the front line say, keep it up because it's, it is paying off. This ray of light yeah. doesn't mean it's time to drop our guards. Don't give up at the end. We're almost there. Morgan Romero, KGW News. And turning to our schools, some districts are still figuring out the logistics of hybrid learning. Others are already offering the option. Today, sixth graders in the Vancouver Public School District had their first day of in-person hybrid school. One of those sixth graders is Sheena Pyatt's daughter, Ashlyn. She says the hybrid learning opportunity is good news, both academically and socially. I'm so glad. She is kind of quiet and reserved. And so being on Zoom, she hasn't really made any friends. This is a new school for her. And so she doesn't know any of the teachers. Meantime, other districts are also moving forward. The Battleground School District plan to start hybrid learning for its middle school students today. Lake Oswego Schools expects to have its kindergarten through first grade students back for hybrid tomorrow. As for Portland Public Schools, it plans to begin hybrid learning in April for students in kindergarten through fifth grade.